we shall continue with uh, our conversation on criticisms on Islamic modes of finance. There is uh, one criticism which practitioners of Islamic banking and finance face all the time, and that is related with the benchmarking of Islamic contracts. And the criticism is that the act of benchmarking of Islamic contracts to an interest rate is exactly the same as charging interest. This is the criticism. And the criticism is based on this argument that almost all the Islamic financial products are priced with reference to an interest rate mechanism. It could be Kaibor if the product is uh, being offered in Pakistan. It could be Klaibor if the product is in the Malaysian market. If it could be related to Cybor if the product is being bought and sold in Saudi Arabia. And it could be LIBOR in the past when LIBOR, LIBOR was being used if the product was global. Consequently, the critics argue that these products, Islamic financial products, they behave exactly the same way as their conventional counterparts. And hence, there is no difference between an Islamic financial product and a conventional financial product. Let's see if this is a valid criticism. To be fair, the statement and the uh, argument, it seems like true, but at the same time, it is false as well. It depends on how you want to explain the thing. If uh, I, if I look at the things from one angle, probably the statement and the criticism is valid. If I try to explain the things from another angle, the, the criticism could not be valid. Let's see. Of course, as an advocate of Islamic banking and finance, I would like to say that this is uh, not a valid criticism. But at the same time, as an academic, I have to be independent, I have to be neutral to teach you what, in my view, is the right thing. This is called intellectual honesty. Now, it is true that many Islamic financial products are actually benchmarked to an interest rate, and no one can deny uh, this fact. But benchmarking to an interest rate is not akin to interest, or it's not akin to charging interest. Pricing of anything is a number. Jab aap kehte hain ki the Coca-Cola ki is bottle ki kiemat 50 rupee hai. This 50 is a number. 50 rupees. This is the money, the, a note of 50 rupees which someone gives to a shopkeeper and receives a bottle of coke in return. Ye jo 50 rupay ka note hai, aap ki jeb mein bhi, meri jeb mein bhi, this is not haram. Agar haram ho, to aap isko pheng dete. So money as a medium of exchange and as a legal tender is neither halal nor haram. It's only a medium of exchange. This is something we should keep in mind when we are referring to this criticism regarding benchmarking of Islamic financial products to interest rate. Money is actually uh, a medium of exchange and whatever is being exchanged, i.e. the object of sale, this is important. Price is only relevant in terms of certain rules regarding price, i.e. price should be known. If price is deferred, the 
payment schedule should be known and agreed between the two parties and so on. Okay. If the subject matter is halal, then the transaction is okay. If the subject matter is haram, then the, pro the transaction is not okay. It's haram as well. Subject matter ye ke jo cheez aap kareed bech rahe hain. Uski mein baat kar raha For example, pork is haram. Chicken is halal. Ab pork ki kareed of rokht aap murabha se kare, spot sale se kare, salam se kare. Jo marzi aap zor laga dein ke sab se mazboot islamic contract hum ne use karna hai. That transaction would be haram. In case of halal chicken, if you are buying and selling it on spot, this is okay. If you're buying and selling it on salam basis, on murabha basis, that is acceptable as well. So a car, home, or any other item sold by Islamic banks, these are halal items. They are just priced with reference to an interest rate benchmark. Let's consider an, uh, an interesting example. There is a party A. The person goes to a dukan and buys a bottle of Guinness. Guinness uh, Book of Records, you have heard of it. His sponsor is actually a sharab bana, wali, uh, company, hai, which is an Irish company. Irish log Guinness ko bahut pasand karte. Anyway, the person party A goes to a shop and buys a can of Guinness for 100, 550 rupees. Party B goes to the same shop. Ye George Bernard Shaw ki dukaan hai. Kisi gair muslim ki dukaan hai. Usi jo wo cabinet hai ya free, uh, fridge hai uske aur chiller uske andar ek kandhari anar juice pack bhi pada hua uski qeemat wo poochta hai party b dukandar se iski qeemat kya hai wo kehta hai utni hi hai jitni guinness ki hai of course party b looks at this one of 550 rupees paise deke aake anar ka juice istemal karte hain now because the prices are the same or dukandar keh bhi raha hai, Guinness jitni hi hai. Does it make anar ka juice haram? Not at all. And the shopkeeper even while pricing this uh, anar ka juice can have this thing in mind that I am going to price it exactly the same as Guinness can. It would not make the anarka juice haram because its price is determined with reference to another non sharia item so similarly an islamic home financing product priced with reference to interest rate mechanism does not make the transaction haram this is something we should understand very clearly Similar, similarity of number does not mean rental becomes interest rate. So this is true in case of uh, home financing products. This is true in case of uh, uh, car financing products. And this is true for all the capital markets products. Because benchmarking to a non-sharia rate of return is acceptable from a Sharia viewpoint. The people who make this uh, criticism, they actually are not aware of this uh, fiqhi principle.